In your headlines, Grand Turk mourns the loss of an 11-year-old boy. Improvements have been made to Her Majesty's prison. And Beaches, Turks and Caicos hosted teachers from two local primary schools. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales delivering the latest from across the country this Friday, March 25th, 2022, right to your door. News Watch starts now. A Grand Turk family is mourning the loss of their 11-year-old after the young boy died suddenly on Wednesday evening. Sources say he was a star student loved by many. Here's that report. The sudden death of an 11-year-old boy and student of the Ona Glinton Primary School has shocked residents on the island of Grand Turk. Sources tell Newswatch that after a number of visits to the hospital, young Vladimir Jerome passed away suddenly on Wednesday. He was described as an all-star student, serving as secretary to the Ona Glinton Primary School Student Council. Minister of Education Honorable Rachel Taylor visited the grade 5 H class of which Jerome was a part, offering words of comfort to the parents, principal, teachers, and students of the institution. PTV extends condolences to Jerome's parents, friends, and the entire Ona Glinton Primary School family. TCIAA is taking a more proactive approach this time around as they work to implement a more satisfactory experience for travelers following the influx in travel being experienced within the last week. Here's more. You'd think that with the traveler numbers spiking around the same time every year for the annual spring break rush, that measures would be implemented toward a proactive approach for that influx in visitor numbers. However, after last weekend's frenzy at the Providenciales International Airport, TCIAA officials have come up with a plan to provide a more steady level of comfort for travelers. TCIAA officials shared that they intend to deploy additional security for faster check-in, as well as an increase in airport staff for passenger and guest services. Also noted was an increased number of immigration and health service officers with the execution of all security scanning positions. And where the departure lounge capacity is concerned, officials say they are in dialogue with hoteliers and villa operators to better coordinate guest departure. Officials say some 8,000 travelers are expected to pass through the Providenciales International Airport tomorrow, Saturday, March 26, and of that 8,000, 7,000 will land and depart between 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., a short five-hour window. They made note that American Airlines, with approximately 11 flights, will also land between that period, while another 5,000 passengers are expected the following day, on Sunday the 27th, presenting for more manageable conditions. Last weekend, there were scores of waiting travelers scurrying for shade out of the scorching hot sun, looking for some resolve and a degree of comfort while waiting hours to receive the required services. However, we understand that in this coming week, where officials are expecting some 13,000 travelers, temporary canopies will be constructed to curb this issue. Officials say last weekend's woes was due to a delay in flights, an increase in travel and infrastructural limitations at the very onset of the country's travel peak days. As commercial flights are responsible for 96% of the country's airlift, officials say a decision was made to pull a small exclusive time frame for these air carriers to support the majority of passengers, taxi cab operators, and hotel workers. They say the restriction to FBO operators is only for Saturday between the hours of 12 noon and 5 p.m. and only for inbound flights, but remain open to waive the implementation where necessary. While travelers looking to depart may have seemed to be the only issue, Newswatch is told that on Thursday, travelers experienced up to a two-hour wait just to be processed to exit the Providenciales International Airport. Officials have acknowledged these shortfalls and both manpower and infrastructural developments are underway. Don't go anywhere. More Newswatch will be returned.
This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. Significant improvement at Her Majesty's prison in Grand Turk is being lauded by the governor. He says that overall the facility is now much more disciplined. More in this report. Farming, education and textile production are among the many things keeping prisoners positively engaged these days. While the prison has had its share of problems in recent years, chiefly to do with violence among inmates and against staff, with new management and more structure in recent time, it has become a more disciplined environment. This is according to Governor Nigel Dakin, who visited the facility this past Tuesday, primarily to see how work on a prison farm is coming along. Shared to his Instagram account this week, the governor says he saw significant improvements at the farm. These improvements are due in large parts to the funds the governor says he procured from the United Kingdom for just this purpose. He shares that the staff and prisoners have done an amazing job at generating a model farm, rearing livestock and growing fruits and vegetables. As well as feeding the inmates, Dakin says they intend to launch a farmer's market on the grounds of Waterloo, where the prisoners' produce as well as orders can be sold. Joining the governor on the tour was the Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Josephine Connolly, and Dr. Kevin Brown, chief veterinarian who supports the animal husbandry at the prison. The government is on a path to create genuine employment opportunities for prisoners upon their release. And according to the governor, they have now proposed a way forward. This way will be announced in the coming months. Quote, the great news is that others are playing their part. Two hotels have recently employed previous inmates. End quote. He says there has been the construction of rehabilitation workshops at the prison, in which Anya Willik has been collaborating with his wife Mandy to produce a range of bags and totes to be made in the prison out of kites donated by Big Blue and H2O. Meanwhile, as reported earlier this week, the governor's residence in Grand Turk, Waterloo, has reopened its doors, and two prisoners were selected to assist with the official function to mark its reopening. This move is in line with the intention of the government to get prisoners trained for entry into the hospitality sector upon their release. As it relates to other educational provision for prisoners, Governor Dakin says that representatives from the community college have already been to the prison to scout out how they can support. Additionally, one of the inmates is presently working on their release as a mechanic. Quote, from education through agriculture to mechanics to textile production to hospitality, we've started. And we can do that because the prison is now a disciplined place. End quote. The governor urges that because the present inmates are our future neighbors, stopping recidivism is in everyone's favor. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Alves. The RSPB, known as the largest nature conservation charity in the UK, is partnering with the Turks and Caicos National Trust to celebrate the success of an ongoing project. We bring you the details. The RSPB, a nature conservation charity based in the UK who have been on a mission to give nature a home since 1889, has partnered with the National Trust to celebrate an ongoing project. Today we're, we're gathering as the Iguana Islands Partnership here in Turks and Caicos to celebrate some of the successes of this long-term project that's been going on since 2014, uh, working to protect the unique iguana um, in the, here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Uh, so this is the partnership between the Turks and Caicos National Trust, free government departments, so the Department of Agriculture, the DCR, and the Environmental Health Department, private islands, so Pine Key and Big Ambrose Key, and also international NGOs, so San Diego Zoo and of course the RSPB. 
Sarah Havery, the senior species recovery officer at the RSPB, revealed to Newswatch that the RSPB and National Trust have a long-standing relationship of over 20 years. The way we work is we support the Trust with achieving their ambitions and their priorities. And of course, for the Trust, clear clear priorities for them are the heritage sites, so Little Water Key and Little Ambrose Key, um, which are both heritage sites for the National Trust. Um, and also supporting work around Heaving Down Rock um, and Half Moon Bay as well and as part of the wider partnership. Havery explained that the organizations are celebrating a number of successes, one of them being removing feral cats from Pine Key, which posed a threat to the rock iguanas. Little Water Key is so important because it holds one of the largest populations of rock iguanas left in the world and they were under threat from, from feral cats and also rodents. The feral cats were removed in 2019 and, um, and basically that's been successful. So we're trying to celebrate that legacy and make sure that cats do not get back to that island chain and also working to actually make sure that the rodents are not impacting the iguana population as well by suppressing them through long-term control programs. Another aspect they highlighted was the impact of green iguanas. Newswatch was informed that green iguanas do not belong in the Turks and Caicos Islands. However, there's been an increasing number of sightings. They are not, they're not like your endemic iguanas. They breed fast, they impact infrastructure, and they're going to threaten your, your important wildlife that you have, have here in the Turks and Caicos, including your native iguana. Uh, so we're actually going to be hearing today from Jane Hokinson from the Cayman Islands government, so from their Department of Environment, who's going to tell us their story about their challenges with green iguanas, where the population has exploded to over a million, and they've spent over seven million dollars having to control the species. And we do not need that here in the Turks and Caicos. Uh, so we're talking much, a lot about kind of the, the impacts invasive species can have and then the importance of biosecurity. So preventing invasive species from arriving here in the Turks and Caicos in the first place and then preventing them from being moved around the different islands um, actually here in the Turks and Caicos. Stay tuned for more of this story in a subsequent newscast. Don't touch that remote. We'll be right back. Coming up next is your sports authority and weather forecast. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. Here's the latest in your sports authority and weather forecast. The newly refurbished National Stadium is prepared just in time for the upcoming Carifta and Commonwealth Game Trials. The Carifta Trials begin today and will see youth from across the TCI compete for a spot on the national team. Carifta 2020 and 2021 was cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are very excited that in 2022, we were able to take a team to the Carifta Games hosted in Jamaica. After years of waiting, our track is now refurbished and our first event on this track will be the Grifter Trials 2022. We hope to see you here on March 25th and 26th to celebrate our athletes and to encourage them as they vie for a spot for Team TCI. Keep an eye out for senior athletes competing in special showcase events for a chance to qualify for the Commonwealth Games team. The stadium will officially be reopening to the public in April, but you can go out and support the athletes in the stands or via the Sports Commission Facebook page. For your Sports Authority, I'm Ali Carvey. Here's your three-day weather forecast. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk on Saturday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 81, low 75, 
winds south southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. On Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, high 79, low 74, winds north northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. On Monday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 78, low 74, winds north northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For South Cake is on Saturday, partly cloudy skies, high 81, low 74, winds south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. On Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, high 79, low 74, winds north northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. On Monday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 78, low 74, winds north northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For North and Middle Cake is on Saturday, Partly cloudy skies, high 83, low 73, winds south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. On Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, high 79, low 73, winds north at 10 to 20 miles per hour. On Monday, partly cloudy skies, high 78, low 73, winds north northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Prepared in Pine Key on Saturday, sunshine and clouds mixed, high 82, low 73, wind south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, high 79, low 73, winds north at 15 to 25 miles per hour. On Monday, partly cloudy skies, high 78, low 73, winds north-northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And on Providencial is on Saturday, sunshine and clouds mixed, high 82, low 73, winds south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, high 79, low 73, winds north at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And on Monday, partly cloudy skies, high 78, low 73, winds north-northeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Now for your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise 6.46 a.m., sunset 7.03 p.m., and for your high tides and low tides, high tides 3.06 a.m., 3.41 p.m., and low tides 9.39 a.m., 9.47 p.m. And that's it for your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to News Watch. In recognition of Education Week and Teachers Day, Beaches, Turks and Caicos hosted the teachers from the Inid Capron Primary School and the Eliza Simons Primary School for a special breakfast and lunch, respectively. Take a look. On March 11, 2022, over 50 teachers were able to enjoy a break from their usually busy schedules as special dining guests at Giuseppe's restaurant in the French Village. Teachers are truly the backbone of our educational system and their hard work deserves recognition, especially during Education Week, stated Beaches, Turks and Caicos' general manager, James McAnally. Adding to his statement, he said, It was truly our pleasure to host such a lively group. Their enthusiasm was infectious and we enjoyed having them all here with us today. Seemingly, the group of teachers that were present at the Beaches Resort were elated from the appreciation and recognition showed to them throughout the entire day. 
Also as a demonstration of appreciation, the Raymond Gardner High School in North Caicos reportedly received complimentary day passes to Beaches, Turks and Caicos to be presented at the Teachers Day event in North Caicos. That brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Pinales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated until next time.